John, let me start first with the most basic question, uh, just to help everyone uh, around the Delaware Valley uh, understand. Nick Sirianni, who? <laughs> NFL insider John McMullen with first reaction, news out of South Philadelphia. The Philadelphia Eagles have hired their new head coach. Johnny Mack, first reaction, sir. Well, the news came really from Palm Beach Island, Billionaires Row down there. That's where Jeffrey Lurie did all this work, did the heavy lifting in this coaching search. And it's interesting, Krause, because um, number nine out of ten People interviewed uh, Nick Sirianni, uh, the offensive coordinator of the Indianapolis Colts, under our old friend Frank Reich, uh, the new head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. A uh, bit of a surprise. I, I, I've been very honest about this. A lot of people around this league thought Josh McDaniels was going to get this job. That's what Howie Roseman was pushing for. Uh, ultimately, Jeffrey Lurie had some concerns over that, understandably so, because of what went on in Indianapolis with Josh McDaniels and before that with Denver. Uh, and then late in this process, Tuesday, really, and Tuesday bled into Wednesday, uh, which told you how much the Eagles liked Nick Sirianni. Uh, kind of hit the home run late, bottom of the eighth at least, maybe not bottom of the ninth, but uh, turned the thinking. And, you know, to me it looks like trying to recreate what they did in 1999 with Andy Reid, who was, about 40 at that time and sort of off the radar. Nobody knew all that much about him. Uh, and, and Nick's 39 this time. Obviously, that was his first head coaching interview, first time uh, being on that kind of stage. Uh, and it seems like the Eagles are trying to recreate that magic that ultimately lasted 14 years because, look, since 2012 now, what have we had? Six, six different coaches at the Cat count Pat Shermer uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles. So the revolving door has to stop at some point. Hopefully it's Nick Sirianni. All roads lead to Andy Reid. I was going to ask you uh, to draw some sort of a parallel uh, to the Andy Reid hiring. But, John, let me start first with the most basic question, uh, just to help everyone uh, around the Delaware Valley uh, understand. Nick Sirianni, who? <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. I, I mean, again, he, he was, you know, it was a very similar setup uh, to what uh, Doug Peterson and Frank Wright were here in Philadelphia. That's how, uh, you know, Doug was obviously the play caller, uh, but Frank had had a big impact on, on game planning. Uh, then when he went out to Indianapolis, he brought in Nick Sirianni as his offensive coordinator. Those two knew each other from their time together with the San Diego Chargers, where Sirianni kind of jockeyed back and forth between wide receiver and quarterbacks coach um, and and brought him on as the offense coordinator uh, with Frank in the Doug Peterson spot. He was calling the plays, but Nick Sirianni had a big impact on the game planning and and such like that. So it's interesting for so many levels because, Look, the Eagles just moved on from Doug Peterson. We all know that. We all know the success and um, what Frank Reich meant to this organization. Now they're going back into that. You can question Jeffrey Lurie's decision-making. We all will. Um, sometimes it's, it makes you shake your head a little bit, but um, maybe you just thought the shelf life was, was done with Doug Peterson uh, and, and wanted to go in a different direction from that standpoint, but – um, to end up with sort of the same family and Frank Reich, it's a, it's a bit strange. John, let me ask you about the Deuce Staley dynamic, because if the reports are true, there was a huge push from inside the locker room for Deuce Staley to finally get his opportunity uh, as a head coach, and yet he's passed over again by the same darn organization that he's been very loyal to. Yeah, and you have to wonder at what point does Deuce stop being that old faithful? You know, he's been here as a coach. Obviously, he was here as a player, but as a coach, 
he's already been here under three regimes, going back to pay Andy Reid. Um, and, and now they'll ask him to be a part of a, the fourth. Will he agree to it? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. That'll be one of the stories to watch in the upcoming days. But it was an interesting shift a couple days ago. As I mentioned, Nick interviewed Tuesday, and that's exactly – uh, when things started to shift on the assistant coach front. A couple of these coaches were kind of told that, you know, to start looking for other jobs. And you, you saw the report of Jeff Stoutland going back to Alabama. Well, all of a sudden, uh, Doug Marone gets that job. Uh, now it looks like he's, the Eagles want to keep him. Um, you, you, you saw the report uh, that Detroit wanted to interview Dave Phipps as special teams coordinator, uh, and the Eagles blocked that. That was a clear indication in hindsight that they had shifted from McDaniels to Sirianni because that's another part of this, Joe. Now they'll get to sort of do what they wanted to do with Doug Peterson and put assistant coaches they're comfortable with in positions they want them in. And and Nick doesn't have, to be honest, a ton of power to come in and say, I want my own coaching staff. The other dynamic, Johnny Mac. Well, there's a lot of dynamics. We'll never call, we'll never cover them all. Obviously, uh, in this short first reaction from NFL insider John McMullen, uh, the other variable is Carson Wentz. Now, you're going to have to educate me. I don't know. I don't understand how the dynamic is going to be with Nick and with Carson. But certainly, that was part of the. Um, kitchen table conversation when Sirianni was talking to Lori and or and speaking to Howie I don't know how that all played out but help me understand it oh no sure I mean that was one of the big things the Eagles were were going through with all these candidates with sort of their plan to sort of fix for lack of a better word Carson Wentz because uh it's just too much of a of a hit from a, a dead money perspective to move on from him, the trade from him so this is another clear indication uh, that the Eagles want to reboot with Carson Wentz and, and try to salvage his career in Philadelphia. By the way, I'm not sure Carson Wentz wants that, to be honest. So I, I think a lot of the fixing of Carson Wentz, so to speak, has to come from him, uh, has to come from the realization that he has to do some things a little bit differently. Uh, but from the other end, uh, obviously Nick has a history with quarterbacks has a history, as I mentioned, of putting together game plans, uh, coaching quarterbacks. So uh, clearly they they felt this guy was was comfortable. uh, They were comfortable enough with him to say, hey, you got to fix this quarterback position because that was a big part of his job, no question about it. John, get, I want to get to the cover the Andy Reid part of the conversation. Again, all roads seem to somehow connect uh, to Andy Reid. Go back to when Andy was hired, his first season as the Philadelphia Eagles head coach, a losing season, but an immediate turnaround in his second season. So as I start to try and understand and learn about Nick Sirianni and what it's going to look like, it, are, are, are the Eagles in a rebuild? Is this something that's going to turn quickly? What are your thoughts about that? Well, I, I think I think they are in a rebuild. You know, Jeffrey used the term transition uh, seven different times in his press conference when he talked about firing Doug Peterson. So they never want to use that term, and, and that rebuild uh, is the term uh, we're talking about. But he did use that term transition. He knows they have to get younger. They have to start um, re-sort of populating this roster from a talent perspective. Uh, but it is the NFL. It's not the NBA. It, it, rebuilds don't take a long time if you make good decisions. And you, you just bring up Andy – in 99 and, and, and 2000, you know, once you get the quarterback in place, things took off and, and Donovan McNabb. Um, and, and, you know, the hope here is that they start making better uh, decisions uh, from a personnel perspective. And maybe you have a little bit of growing pains in year one, as often happens, and, and then you're ready to, to roll by year two. But I, I think all this doom and gloom talk of, the Eagles aren't going to be good in three to four years. The windows are so short in this league to turn over 
you see worst to first every single season. Um, it's it's really uh, not difficult to turn things around quickly. So um, I, I don't think you have to worry about this overbearing pe- period of not being competitive or anything of that nature if this group can start making good decisions when it comes to personnel. NFL insider John McMullen with his first reaction to the announcement that the Philadelphia Eagles have hired their new head coach. Subscribe to the Jacob Media channel. You'll get reports from John McMullen tonight on The Fix with Ryan Rothstein, tomorrow on The Middle with Barrett Brooks, Harry Mays, and Aton Shander. And pay no attention to my opening line or my opening video drop leading into this segment. John McMullen was dead wrong. Don't pay any attention yeah. to that, right, Johnny Mac? Yeah. I was a, well. I, I, it, again, you know, and people can go. You mentioned the Jacob Media YouTube page, which is blowing up. People can go. They they don't like the context when I said it was going to be Josh McDaniel, and I, I've given the context pretty quickly. One of the assistant coaches on the team was told it was going to be Josh McDaniels, and. Um, you know, he was told he was going to have to shop, start shopping for a new job. Uh, and then the Jeff Stoutland uh, news, as I mentioned, broke at the exact same time. So it's pretty clear. So I, I'm not going to go that far. When I say I'm wrong, I'm wrong. What happened here is they were going one direction, and then Jeffrey Lurie changed his mind. And it happened. NFL insider John McMullen. Thank you, John. Hey, thanks, Strauss.